onto this Ziyarat trip because I'm sure every single Shia around the world wishes to go on this Ziyarat trip and Alhamdulillah I have been privileged to be invited on this Ziyarat trip <clears throat> and I wanted to come because I've actually been to Karbala before and Najaf and visited the shrines of Imam Hussain and Imam Ali and Sayyid Fadl Abbas but at the time I was actually a Sunni and now that I have found the path of the Prophet's family, the Ahlul Bayt, it's as though I felt like I needed to revisit in order to maybe pledge, re-pledge my allegiance to the members of the family of the Prophet. Because when I came before, I didn't know anything about Imam Hussein, or I didn't know anything about Imam Ali or Sayyid Fadl Abbas or anything about Karbala or Ashura. It was just mainly I was visiting, I didn't know what I was doing actually. But now it's a whole different and new experience and new feeling and it's a truly amazing feeling to be honest. So the reason uh, why I decided to go to Ziara was uh, actually my family. They've been going for several several years now, and uh, it's always been in my prayers that I uh, would pray to God that maybe He would uh, allow me to go to Ziara. And uh, thankfully, this year He granted me and gave me that privilege to go see um, the, the family of the Prophet, uh, peace be upon them all. And it was just such a privilege and amazing experience that really you can. You can't really explain unless you see it yourself. Uh, I found lately, the, within the last couple of years, I've been feeling a lot more religious. I've been getting a little more closer to God, alhamdulillah. And um, just been doing a lot more readings about uh, the Prophet and his family. Peace and blessings be upon them all. And I felt like that really implanted something inside me, kind of driving me to want to go to do ziyara and, and, and go and see the history of, of Islam. Well, first of all, I came uh, for Arabain, um, 2014, and that was my first time to Iraq, Najaf, Karbala, Kazamain. And um, we did the walk for, th uh, for three days with the spiritual journeys. And it was amazing, it was my first time. It was absolutely, it's really hard to explain the feeling, uh, the emotions, the environment. And uh, if you haven't, if there's anyone out there who hasn't done the walk, Inshallah, we'll do it all again in 2015. Um, so I experienced that, and then when I went back home, back to Toronto, Canada, uh, the first thing I wanted to do was to come back again as soon as possible. Uh, because I believe once you go to Karbala, you leave your heart there. All of it or half of it, parts of it, you leave it there and forever. So when I went back home, I really missed it. I really, really missed it. And um, I told my mother the first thing I said was, please pray for me. I want to go back to Kerala, right? And amazingly, it happened again. 
And um, the first time I went, I could not believe that I was actually in the middle of Beinul Haramein. And then the second time, I, I still can't believe I'm here for the second time within four or five months. Um, so uh, I just really wanted to come back. Um, and um, I just want to be, uh, I felt really close to God uh, and the Imams and the Ahlul Bayt. Um, and then this time around, I wanted to come back again and feel that again, feel that love again. And inshallah, when I go back home, uh, I mean, I've already seen change within, since Arbaeen. And um, inshallah, I'll see bigger changes um, in me that I have to change about myself. After visiting the shrine of Imam Ali, we went to Wadi Salam, which is the biggest cemetery in the whole world. And visiting this cemetery was something different. Like it's literally the size of a city as a cemetery. And knowing that in Prophet Hud and Prophet Saleh are, bur are buried there, which is also so close to the shrines of Imam Ali and Prophet Adam and Prophet Noor and knowing that all these great personalities and great characters in the Islamic world are buried amongst each other is a big thing. Um, also at Wadi Salam, pretty much like visiting any cemetery in the world it reminds you of death and how you have no idea as to how long you're going to live and you could be put six feet underground at any moment in life. And knowing that that cemetery, hadith say, ruayat say, that narrations say that if you're buried there, all your sins are wiped out. And I actually had the experience of visiting a friend's father who was buried there and we went to visit him and knowing that I can actually relate to someone that is buried here actually it impacted on me because it's it's different like knowing that this cemetery is the greatest cemetery in the Islamic world and to be buried there would be such a big privilege and an honor and Allah his father, may he be resting in peace. <laughs> When visiting Imam Ali's shrine, it was, it was a tough journey getting there, first of all. And then seeing the whole mosque was one feeling. And then entering the doors was another feeling. And seeing the shrine from the doors was as though you, every step you're getting closer and closer. And then as you approach the cage of where Imam Ali is actually buried, there's hundreds of people surrounding Imam Ali and wishing to touch the burial chamber and it's actually quite tough to get in there but once you actually get in there and touch the cage it's as though I felt an energy strike out and I actually had goosebumps run through my whole body and it was just a feeling of relief that Alhamdulillah, like I have finally reached here and I have come to visit my Imam and it builds on the relationship with Imam Ali because like you read about Imam Ali, you hear about so many stories and so many hadiths and how he was so close with the Prophet and how patient he was in the time of the other Khalifs and 
to see to know that he is the second greatest man to ever walk on the face of the earth and me having the privilege of going to visit him it's just creates a whole new connection like there's only so much you can connect outside or being away and then when you actually get to him it's a whole different feeling you truly feel his energy strike from the shrine well not knowing about his history i would actually advise that you learn about his history to know what kind of a man he was to appreciate your visit towards him but not knowing anything about him and coming to visit him personally i did it i didn't know anything about him only i knew him as the fourth khalifa but then coming to visit him it i felt a sense of calmness and relaxation and i saw that the mosque was a beautiful mosque and they did so much intricate detail in it got me curious on what kind of a personality must be buried here for them to go through so much effort into building something so great for this man but in order to truly feel the emotions and feeling i really advise that you read about him and know about him and read his history another thing about visiting the shrine of imam ali was as a muslim i didn't even know that prophet nuh and prophet adam were buried next to him and this is actually a huge thing like so you're not actually only visiting imam ali you're visiting prophet adam and prophet nuh and this brings importance on all three characters it shows the importance of Nabi Nuh and Nabi Adam as prophets and Imam Ali as a man to be buried next to prophets and the prophets to be buried next to him as he being the second greatest man to walk the earth. <laughs> Imam Ali, peace be upon him, his, uh, his home. It was a feeling I could not explain. Uh, just, to, just to imagine that uh, our first Imam, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, was walking around where you were walking around and thinking that maybe you placed your feet in the same spot he placed his foot. That's just beyond, beyond any feeling you can actually comprehend. It's, uh, it's something that everyone would really have to experience. Uh, one thing that really made me feel attached to Imam Ali's house, peace be upon him, was the fact that I, I have always imagined myself and wishing and hoping I could have been with him through his life. And to actually be there in his home, it's kind of, it's as close as you can get to him in reality. Being, being in Imam Ali's house also made me think of all the trials and tribulations he's been through, all the stresses he's had, especially after the death of the Prophet, with peace and blessings be upon him. And the one thing that I feel affected me the most is what he must have felt in that home after Fatima salam Allah, alayha, passed away. The walk was amazing uh, this time around. Uh, the first time when I did it uh, in 2014, I had my shoes on and I always followed Feruz, number one, uh, because I walk fast, so I always followed him. And um, amazingly, um, he gave me the flag uh, towards the end of when we were very close to Karbala and I have pictures of it and it was such a great experience to actually hold the flag of Hazrat Abbas and to walk that and then I really wanted to experience that again and um, the same thing happened to me but this time around I wanted to walk without my shoes off to experience what Hazrat Zainab uh, went through. Um, I mean, we'll never truly experience uh, 
what they went through and the whole walk and everything. But I just wanted to experience it a little bit. And inshallah, I, I want to do the walk again in 2015. And inshallah, I want to do it without shoes. Um, so the first thing I did was I took off my took off my shoes and I started the walk. And then Firuz gave me the flag again. And that was such an incredible experience. What an honor. It's, it's really hard to explain. Um, it was amazing to hold the flag and walk to be the first one to see the shrine of Hazrat Abbas. And it's just, um, see the thing is, Arba'in um, Imam Hussein Ali Salam, it doesn't, it's all emotional, it's your heart, right? It's ish, it's love. There's nothing else that can explain the walk to any, you have to come and experience it on your own, right? Um, so it was really emotional for me again. And to feel stones underneath your feet when you're walking, you do feel it. And, and you kind of think about what uh, Hazrat Zainab went through. And uh, it's just an incredible experience. Um, words cannot uh, describe it, explain it. When starting the walk from outside of Karbala, heading towards the shrines of uh, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and Sayyid Fadl Abbas, peace be upon him, the reason for this walk was to try and have a small, intricate taste of what Sayyid Zainab and the rest of the Prophet's family would have been feeling when they had to walk for three days. And they walked barefoot and we did so and we put some mud from the shrine of Imam Hussein and this was in order to basically humble ourselves as much as we could. We're normally in clean clothes, now we dirtied our clothes, we're normally in comfortable shoes and we're walking barefoot and initially the first half an hour, hour, it's very simple, you think, you know, but then after the two hours you start to really feel the throbbingness and the rocks and the gravel digging into your feet and your soul is hurting and thinking about what Sayyidah Zainab would have been feeling walking for three days therefore is it's I can't even like I couldn't even picture it or imagine it like I've struggled to do three hours and subhanAllah she managed to do three days and as we're walking, you, just, you feel tired. And then there's this one corner you turn and you're starting to feel weak and drained. And then you see the dome of Sayyid Fadl Abbas and subhanAllah, it's like a burst of energy reapproaches. And then you continue your walk. And then actually reaching the shrine was a whole nother feeling. It's like a sense of relief. So how they did it for three days, Allahu Alam.
To actually walk around Karbala and to visualize and see where the, the family of the Prophet, where they were martyred, uh, really paints uh, a picture in your mind and really adds something really emotional deep inside. It's hard to explain. To actually visualize the battle itself through our gatherings that we have really, really touches you emotionally. And to visualize and picture the, 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 the martyrdom of uh, Hazrat Abbas, may peace and blessings be upon him, and uh, Ali al-Azhar and Ali al-Akbar, peace and blessings be upon them, is just a really sad experience. On our trip to Al-Furat, where the water of uh, Hazrat Ab Abbas, uh, peace and blessings be upon him, where he went to go gather the water for the women and children who were in the tents thirsty. To actually understand and imagine what he went through traveling there on his own and all the enemies that he overcame on his way there and on the way back and to actually picture him filling up the canister with water and not drinking from it remembering that his, his remembering that the horses were thirsty and his, his um, the women and the children were thirsty how he poured the water back in and how he was martyred in that area is uh, something really touching and really, really emotional that uh, we should all really experience in our lifetime. After visiting the Furat, I felt like that trip really made, really changed my life in the fact that uh, I believe you appreciate things more in life. For example, the water, uh, when you get thirsty, think of, uh, think of the, the family of the Prophet on the day of Karbala, on the day of Ashura, to understand what they went through, the pains they went through, the tribulations they went through, the thirst and hunger they must have went through. It's something that uh, really, really touches someone emotionally and really everyone should, should experience, experience this once at least in their lifetime. The Holy Prophet says, Religion is how you deal with other people. It's not for me to have only long beard and short trousers and for me to cover myself and for me to pray too much. After a long journey, Iraq, Karbala, Najaf, we finally take off for Iran to visit our eighth Imam, Imam Rida. May peace be upon him. And the first sight I actually had of his dome or mosque, you could say, is from the aeroplane. Um, it's so huge that it actually stands out like you would never believe from the aeroplane. And to know that I finally reached another Imam to visit is, well, I haven't actually reached there yet, but to see him was, you could already feel a connection. And then when we landed and then we had to pass through the airport and come to the hotel, it was already maybe about 2, 2.30 in the morning. And then we had the, leader, the leaders of spiritual journeys tell us that you have one hour to take your bags up and rest a little bit and at 3.30 in the morning we will be heading towards the shrine for Ziyara. It came to a bit of a shock to all of us but there is no way in the world that anyone is going to turn down going there at 3 o'clock in the morning. So exactly what we did, we packed our bags, had a little bit of rest and then off we went, walked to the shrine of Imam Rida. And the entering the doors of the mosque it's from the door to the entry of the mosque to the door of the shrine to the door of his cage burial is a long walk it's a, a huge place and it's a different feeling to visiting Imam Hussein and Sayyid Fadl Abbas it's it's calming and it's peaceful and it's relaxing and you feel a different energy and it's a different sense of spirituality that runs through you. In Imam Hussein, may peace be upon him, it's more sad and upset and knowing what he went through and knowing the trials and tribulations he had compared to Imam Rida, it's, it's a completely different feeling. It's a calming atmosphere and touching the shrine was also calming, it just relaxes you.
many miracles have had happened here especially those people who did not have children after the ziyara of imam ridha alayhi salam they got children those who are not well they came here through the blessings of imam alayhi salam many have been cured if you ask many iranians about the miracles which had happened here they will tell you many stories uh, i was born in iran uh, and uh, but raised in canada so coming back home again was really special, but being in Mashhad. And um, when you, uh, when you, uh, we were on the bus, right? So uh, the first thing you see when you get to the city center is the shrine of uh, uh, Imam Raza, alayhi salam, right? So that's really special. It's almost like uh, when you reach Karbala, the first shrine that you see is Hazrat Abbas. So it's a similar feeling, right? So you say your salams from far away, right? And you have this special feeling that, wow, you're, uh, even though you're really tired, it's like two, three in the morning, um, you say your salams and then you go to your hotel and then drop your stuff. And the first thing we did was uh, we walked towards the shrine and uh, we did our ziyarat and we did uh, our uh, fajr prayer there. Um, that was also really special because um, being in Mashhad, it's so epic. <laughs> the the uh, uh, the Haram is just so massive. Um, it's uh, nothing you, c you cannot compare it to uh, Amir al Mu'minin's or Imam Hussein's, right? Um, and and you really sense um, peace as soon as you pass the gates. You just feel really calm, and you feel peaceful. And there was a really nice breeze. Um, and that was really special that, and I asked them before, uh, when I was in Toronto, I asked uh, Imam Raza that I wanted to come and um, to invite us, you know. And uh, again, you, you just can't believe that you're in Mashhad, you're in the Haram, and you're touching the Zari, you know. It's really special because, uh, you know, throughout the year, you send so much, you know. And you do not deserve to be in any of these shrines. You just, you know, I'm speaking for myself. Um, because, you know, Arbain was really special and you promised the Imams that you won't sin again, right? Um, that when you go back, you're gonna change. And then it's really hard, you know, um, and you do sin. But, and it's really amazing that they invite you again and again and again, even though you're carrying so much burden and so much sin, but they invite you, and they invite you, and they, they invite you. It's just so much life. They just give you so much love, even though I personally deserve any of it. And that's just, um, it shows how much care they have for us, you know. I don't even consider myself a Shia. I'm, I'm a, uh, Shia is, uh, you know, Salman Farsi, or, you know, uh, Habib, all those guys. Um, I'm just a lover of the Ahl Bayt. And I hope that I get closer uh, to the Imams. I cannot call myself a Shia, you know. I don't, I'm not good enough. So I'm, I'm just a follower, a lover of the Ahl Bayt. And again, I pray that we all come back again once more. Ali, Ali. Forget about your doubts, uh, just book your ticket and trust me, you, you will be invited and the money will come because um, that's how Imam Hussein works. Uh, you just have to be invited. So ask the Imam for the invitation and he will provide everything. Uh, I've experienced this twice. So um, 
no doubts. Just come. You have to come. You have to come. No matter what I say, it's just it won't make sense till you actually come and to Karbala, to Najaf, to Iran, and experience the whole thing. And then you're here with a uh, spiritual journey is amazing. Um, they take care of you really well. Everything is organized for you. And um, you'll experience so much and you learn so much. I've, I've taken away so much the first time, the, on the uh, last Adrain, and this time around, I've met so many incredible people. And every time you come, you meet new people. Um, and uh, the, the experience is just uh, too much. Uh, but the important thing is, it's not a holiday. It is not a holiday. This is a, it's a religious uh, <laughs> journey. You have to come here in order to want to change, right? If your intention is to get away from your country and, and just have fun, you can do that. Um, but you really have to want to change, you know? Uh, you have to give something. Imam Hussein gave you something. He invited you, right? So are you ready to give something up? Give up. You have to give something up, right? If, if there's a sin in your life that you've committed throughout your life, you have to really look at yourself and work hard and promise the Imam that, listen, you know, you invited me. I'm going to do this for me and for you and for Allah, right? And, um, and really promise the Imam that you're going to give this up, right? Um, so don't have any doubts.